Igor Cherkovsky, who created this whole water birth movement in Russia. In, he started in the 60s and continued through the 70s. I joined him in 82. And at that time he was um, he was mainly preparing women th for birth through uh, working with them psychically. He is this Siberian shaman, um, a very powerful seer, and one of those medicine people that um, you know people would go on an airplane to to fly to Moscow where he was doing his healing sessions because he would just you know sit with his eyes closed and wave his arm in front of a person and then start telling them what happened in their family with his mother with his grandmother and it was in that female lineage that he would find um, certain um, origins of the symptoms that a person is having right now so he would just start telling uh, stories about the life in this family. So your grandmother ran away with this, um, you know, gypsy king, and her family disowned her, and then their child was kidnapped, and 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 just sort of unravel this maternal um, storyline. And each session would be about two hours long. And then you would see, like, I worked very closely with him, and I, I saw miracles right in front of my eyes happening when, um, when symptoms will disappear because of his, um, his conviction that he can cut the, those umbilical cords that are going from those past situations into present time. And he said that basically all those past situations carry this energetic um, pipeline through time. So when he was um, achieving his healing result, it somehow was affecting the mother and the grandmother and the daughter and her daughter. It sort of was going quite um, uh, permeatingly. So, um, he was basically the source of information for us. And there were, for example, situations when he would um, deliver a baby and everything is fine, but then um, the father of the baby would go to the other room to call his mom and the moment she hears that the child was born the child stops breathing that was the, the uh, an example that really brought our attention to um, a reality of those unseen connections that we have within the family when um, turns out that the mother of this father of the baby really did not want this child. She thought that the woman was not the right one for her son, that he could do better, that, you know, that, um, that the baby was just an excuse to trap her son. So she never blessed and never resolved her willingness to accept the woman and, and this child. So throughout pregnancy she was just resentful, but the whole uh, news that this baby is already here just knocked her out of her senses. She started screaming and yelling and the baby, who was already something like 15-20 minutes old, checked out. The, the message was so strong um, that um, baby decided to... Well, it's not a conscious decision. See, it was just... It, it created this moment of dissociation. And for baby, a brand new baby, that's enough. Babies are not very rooted. 
babies are not very strongly connected to this three-dimensional world, so they can easily check in and out. The good news was that Igor was right there, and he heard the screaming on the phone. It was so loud that he heard it in the next room. And he just instantly jumped to it, and it's like, what just happened? What happened? And he started doing his thing and cutting the cords between them. And, and uh, three or four minutes later, <gasps> the baby took a breath and came back. When, when that connection between the baby and the grandmother was stopped. So that situation really brought our attention that not only we need to work with the woman, but with the whole environment into which the baby is being brought in. The, the, the father of the baby, they're both sets of parents, the siblings, the, you know, whatever it was in the woman's world that could be counterproductive, counterintentional to health and well-being of this mama-baby unit. And I can sit until cows come home and tell you story after story after story because every couple that was coming into this um, movement became a movement very soon. And um, each couple was bringing their own story and, and their journey was sort of unfolding in front of us. And we could not help but notice the patterns of similarities. That all the stories were building into a very clear picture how relationships in the family are accumulating certain emotional, psychological field that is affecting the situation and um, just approach it mechanically uh, didn't seem um, wise because if we were working emotionally and just working with the energy behind the story instead of working with the story that was much more successful and it was going really fast because uh, very soon it became clear that the amount of people that was coming into classes and wanted to have this experience was exceeding Igor's capacity to work with individually. So we started diligently looking for what could replace and be equally effective as his sessions because he could only work with that many people a day, each session taking a couple hours.